Remember to stop on over at mashupmath.com to download the free guide that accompanies this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to focus on parent functions. <laughs> Behind all the functions we know is a parent function, and if we understand that parent function, we can better understand how functions transform in the coordinate plane. We'll start off with the constant function f of x equals k, where k is just some real number, in this case, k equals 5 for the equation y equals 5, which is a horizontal line. Now the domain for this function is going to be all the values from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range of this function is just going to be the value k, in this case, 5. The next parent function is the linear function f of x equals x. This is a diagonal line with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. We can see that the domain and range of the linear function is going to be all values from negative infinity to positive infinity. If we were to, for example, shift this linear function up 4 units, the new equation would, would be y equals x plus 4, however the domain and range would still remain the same. Our next parent function is the absolute value function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. We know that absolute value is always positive, that helps us to understand why this parent function remains above the x-axis and why the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, but the range starts at zero and moves up to positive infinity, but again, is never negative. Let's see what happens if we take this function and shift it to the left five units and then down four units. We can see that the parent function was transformed and moved to a new location, and we can also see how this new equation reflects that transformation. For this particular shift, we can see how the domain remained the same, but the range has to be adjusted. Now instead of 0 to infinity, we have negative and 4 to infinity. The next parent function is the quadratic function f of x equals x squared. This parabola should look very familiar to us. If we compare it to the absolute value function, we can clearly see that it has the same domain and range, the domain being negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range being from 0 to infinity. Let's go ahead and transform this function by shifting it to the right 6 units and then up 3 units. This new equation reflects the transformation on the parent function y equals x squared and we can see how the domain would stay the same but the range would need to be adjusted from 0 to infinity to 3 to infinity. <laughs> The next parent function is the square root function, f of x equals the square root of x. This function has both a domain and range of from 0 to positive infinity. Now if we were to multiply this parent function by a factor of 3, we would have a new graph to represent y equals 3 times the square root of x. But we can still see that the domain and range would remain the same. <laughs> Our last parent function is the oh-so-strange inverse function, f of x equals 1 over x. Notice that there is a vertical asymptote at 0, so the domain for this function is going to be all real numbers except for 0. x cannot equal 0. There is also a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so the range of this function is all real numbers except that y cannot equal 0. These asymptotes occur because we know that we cannot have 0 in the denominator, so x can never equal 0. If we transform this parent function by shifting it up 2 units on the y-axis, we have a new equation y equals 1 over x plus 2. Notice that the location of our vertical asymptote at x equals 0 did not change, so the domain will not change. Notice, however, that our horizontal asymptote has shifted up and now exists at y equals 2. So the new domain will be all real numbers except for 2. Please follow us on Instagram at MashupMath for free daily math tips and infographics.